Hello and welcome everyone to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this beautiful green forest floor painting uh, with ferns, grasses and some sweet little mushrooms. Uh, you can see here that I've already masked out some shapes uh, on my paper. This is using uh, my Pebio drawing gum and basically you can do whatever shapes you really want. I've drawn for a couple of ferns some grasses and some little mushrooms down the bottom there. You can see also my colours on the bottom of the screen. Uh, I'll pop uh, a full list in the description below. Uh, but for now all I've done is I've taped the paper to my board and I'm just wetting it all over with an extra large hardhead brush. You can use any wash brush for this really, just a nice big sturdy brush. We want that whole paper to get nice and wet ready for the colour. And so my first colour for today uh, is Quinacridone Gold, <laughs> or Quin Gold as I will be <laughs> calling it from now on because that, that's rather a mouthful. And you can see I'm just brushing it on here in these lovely sweeping diagonals from the top right corner, uh, giving the impression hopefully that the sun is streaming down onto the forest floor from that top direction. And here we are coming in with sap green, my next colour. Uh, any beautiful bright green will do here though really. Uh, and we've got the the green rising up to meet that lovely golden sunshine colour. You don't need to be too neat at this stage, just as long as you're moving the paint around that nice wet paper and getting some lovely shapes and a lovely directionality in the wash. You can see I'm just sort of sweeping my brush around, getting some interesting shapes, following the path of that fern shape that I've already drawn on with the masking fluid. Uh, and I'm trying to make sure that I don't uh, overpower the yellow that I've put on as well. Uh, I want that lovely gold colour uh, to peep through. And now I'm just adding some darker greens. This is perylene green that I'm using. Uh, just a little bit more directionality, a little bit of contrast there uh, in the uh, direction of my strokes on the bottom right corner. Rather than having them all facing the one direction, I decided to introduce a little tuft of grass facing, <laughs> facing the other way here. You can see I'm trying not to be too heavy handed with the Perilean Green because it's a very powerful colour. Uh, it can easily overpower things if you use too much of it. So I'm just using it to put in some shape and some detail here and letting it diffuse into uh, the rest of the paint. going back in and adding a little bit more of the gold over the top. You can see it goes on quite nicely. It's a strong colour if it's not too dilute. Just using it to create those extra little shapes, little flicks of colour. Again you don't need to be too precise here, just really go for it with uh, whatever brush feels comfortable for you. But today I'm using uh, this flat brush. It's a Princeton Neptune synthetic modeler brush, uh, one inch uh, across. And uh, it's got this lovely flat edge which you can use to do these, uh, these thinner strokes uh, as well as turning it sideways, obviously getting the, uh, uh, the full power of the wash brush and covering, some, uh, covering larger areas quite quickly. Mm -hmm. 
and now for just a few little darker darker strokes in places I'm using burnt umber which is uh, a lovely warm brown colour uh, and I think goes really well with these other lovely warm spring like colours that we've used just to give a little bit of extra uh, oomph around <laughs> around the bottom of the uh, of the page uh, that sort of lovely rich earthy colour that of course is going to be uh, on the forest floor there. As you can see I've just decided to bring out my fan brush to uh, add in a little bit of softer uh, extra detail. You can get softer lines on using this than you can using the big wash brush. You can see I'm able to just do these little gentle strokes, turning the brush around using the, uh, using the fan, uh, making use of how the bristles sort of split out when it's wet and give you those lovely light feathery marks. Here we are, I'm done with the wash. You can see my paper's still quite wet. I have to hold it up there and show you just how wet and shiny it is in parts, particularly down on that bottom corner where the, uh, the water has run, obviously, because um, I've got the board sitting at an angle. Uh, I'm going to use some salt now, uh, a little salt technique here. I'm just using simple, cheap table salt, and I'm just sprinkling it carefully onto the surface uh, just a very light sprinkle uh, where the paint is not too wet but is still a little bit damp. Uh, around the top of the paper um, it's drier so the marks don't show up so much. This is just a little zoom in here just trying to show you this is what it looks like uh, after about a minute. And this is what it looks like after about 10 minutes. <laughs> You can see it's bloomed out and given you those lovely little beautiful white sort of freckly patches, little mini cauliflowers that I think just look so pretty uh, in paintings like this. I always think they could be little tufts of, of, of grasses, uh, seeds or fireflies, something equally pretty. Uh, and this is how it looks now that it's dry. Uh, you can see the salt has taken uh, a lovely effect here. Uh, and now I'm just going to uh, rub off the masking fluid. I've already brushed away the salt. Uh, always make sure that you do that. You don't want it sitting on your on your painting. Uh, and you can get rid of the masking fluid using your finger or by just rubbing it off gently with an eraser. And this is what it looks like. Now I've removed all the masking fluid. You can see those shapes that I've drawn earlier a little bit more clearly. They're all sort of nice and bright and white, uh, showing through that lovely green wash that we've put on. So now all I'm going to do is start putting in some detail here. And I'm beginning with some lovely long, elegant uh, grasses. And to do this, I'm using a new brush. I'm using a sword liner. Uh, from Pro Art, it's a small synthetic brush and uh, its tip is shaped almost like a dagger's point. Uh, it's a sort of a flat brush which comes to a point uh, and it's great for doing these long, uh, elegant, beautiful strokes because it carries a lot of paint and water without having to go back and, and refill from the palette. So you can get these really long, lovely strokes uh, and if you apply the right amount of pressure on it uh, you can get some really nice shapes as well. There we go, this is the uh, the shape of the brush. Um, I would highly recommend uh, you get one of these if you're uh, a fan of this sort of painting because it does really make everything so much more easy and uh, it gives you that ability to do these lovely, uh, strong, spontaneous uh, brush strokes.
as you can see I'm mixing colours here uh, the first shape I did using the Quinn Gold which when it's not dilute has this lovely rich golden colour uh, less yellow and more rich and you can see I'm just putting on some sap green there over the top and you can see how beautiful the uh, colours are when they uh, work together and harmonise uh, you can see I've just put on a few extra strokes using the uh, the technique that I showed you earlier I <laughs> don't want to uh, sit here and show you every single brush stroke because as you can see from that bottom right corner I did get a little bit carried away off camera and this is uh, this is useful to see if you do blob some paint uh, accidentally just a little bit of tissue if it's nice and if the paint's still quite wet you can just pull it up using tissue very carefully you can see there that green mark has gone So the sword liner for those lovely long uh, elegant grass strokes you can see there or you know whichever brush you prefer really you can use a rigger brush which uh, is a long uh, thin brush you can get very similar effects from that um, or a round brush, a calligraphy brush, uh, even a flat brush really whatever takes your fancy but this is this is the way that I do it and now to put in the ferns that are uh, the, the star of the show really here <laughs> you can see I've followed the long sort of curling line the, um, the, the main fern shape just using a simple green line and now I'm doing the fronds this really is a lovely simple way to get the ferns to look really effective you can see I'm just using I'm using a very ordinary uh, medium sized round watercolour brush uh, just a cheapy one and I'm just using the tip of that brush to do these gentle little strokes starting larger at the base of the fern frond uh, and coming into being a little smaller and narrower at the tip uh, to mimic the uh, natural shape and growth of the fern I think this is uh, a lovely easy way to get the uh, beautiful fern effect without labouring over doing each individual leaf perfectly for hours and hours and hours <laughs> you can see here just how quick it is for me to pop these little details in uh, I'm using sap green again for uh, for this fern detail quite a strong mix as you can see it's showing up really beautifully against the wash uh, and just for a little extra detail whilst these fern fronds are still wet you can take uh, a fine detail brush and bring in a little brown or a little gold and just allow that paint to uh, run through the wet fern fronds and create a little bit of extra detail uh, a hint of, uh, of browning at the edges or curling up or just a little extra interesting colour so it's not too flat there we go so I've done the rest of my fern fronds uh, on this particular uh, on this particular fern just adding a little extra detail to that lovely curl there I love how ferns when they grow they unfurl in this beautiful elegant uh, frond I think it's really one of the, the wonders of the natural world which is why I wanted to to paint it here for you today just going in and adding those extra details with the round brush just flicking out so you make use of that nice sharp point getting those little extra uh, mini fronds <laughs> all curled up in there hiding waiting to unfold And I'm just going over them here with uh, my sword brush and a little bit of burnt umber mixed with the Quinn Gold uh, just to give a little bit of uh, darker shadow and a little bit of extra detail. <laughs> and just tidying up that uh, excess paint there. Honestly, always have uh, some tissue or some kitchen towel or something like that on hand uh, when you're painting it's honestly a godsend <laughs> I 
there we go so using exactly the same technique as I just showed you for the fern uh, I've put in the other fern as well on the left uh, and just filled in that blank lower left hand corner with a few extra grasses using exactly the same technique uh, with the sword liner so now on to the sort of last little real detail of this painting which is these sweet little mushrooms uh, I've already sort of drawn in the rough shape of them with the masking fluid so all I'm doing now is putting in a little burnt umber with my fine detail brush just following around that shape that I've drawn leaving a little bit of the uh, white exposed to give some clarity and some sort of dimensionality to them the impression that the uh, you can see the little little white gills of the mushroom po peeping out underneath its uh, soft brown cap of course you could do these any colour you wanted you could do them smaller, you could do them larger <laughs> you could do those funny little red toadstools uh, that would pop out really beautifully against the greens I think, the red um, so much room for uh, variety in this sort of composition I think you could really um, have a little think, think about your favourite uh, ferns, mushrooms and bits and bobs, anything that comes lives on the forest floor you could put in in this sort of composition uh, I think it's really open to interpretation and you'll probably see another one from me uh, before too long I'm sure probably with some of those funny little red and white mushrooms <laughs> And here I'm just finishing off the painting, putting a last few grass details in wherever it looks a little bit bare. I'm going to uh, finish off by putting in those mushrooms on the right hand side. You can see there's still a little bit of masking fluid there. But I'm also just filling in the extra details using uh, a synthetic uh, round brush to do those lovely uh, like grass shapes the same way that I did the ferns. And now all I'm doing is adding a final touch of detail by splattering with my fan brush. Uh, this is very good fun. <laughs> you just dip it in some wet paint and batter it away. Tap away on uh, a nice sturdy brush handle and you get these lovely spontaneous little splatter marks. Uh, as long as you're uh, careful you can control where they go. You can see I'm concentrating on certain areas uh, on the painting around the bottom and around the sort of tops of the grasses to give the impression of uh, dust and seed heads uh, blowing off them in the wind. Uh, I used uh, three colours to do the spatters. I used the green, the sap green, uh, the twin gold, and here I'm just doing uh, a little burnt umber as well, which is perhaps the one that's showing up, <laughs> that's showing up the best to you at home. I do hope you can see that. And here we are, this is the finished painting, got a shot of it in slightly better light, you can see those lovely rich deep golds and greens um, 
I really hope you enjoyed watching this guys uh, as I really enjoyed painting it for you um, I'll definitely be doing something similar to this again I think I think there's so much room for interpretation in this kind of composition you could easily pop in some wildlife a little wren perhaps hiding under a leaf or a mouse peeping out from behind a fern uh, so let me know what you think in the comments please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this uh, and if you help, want to help support the channel, please feel free to pop over to my Patreon page. I'll pop the link in the description below, along with a list of my equipment. So thank you very much for watching everybody, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.